This video shows the connections of solid wall panels with the Revit precast tools. The wall panels can be connected in vertical or horizontal direction. If we select these walls and call the command split, the program divides the walls into producible panels and also creates the vertical connections between the panels. We see here on one, one type of the connections which is done with profiles and loops. Here is the profile in each wall panel and in each panel there are the loops. On the working side an additional rebar will be placed inside of the loops and all is filled up with concrete. This is an L connection, here we have a D connection, a straight connection and a slanted connection. The type of the connection can be set in the configuration. Under solid wall parts we see here the settings for the connections. Here are the profiles for the different con conditions. I select now that I don't want to have profiles and also no loops. But therefore I want to have anchor plates as connections. So I select here the family anchor plates. Let's save this and make the segmentation for these walls again. Now these walls will be connected with anchor plates. We see the anchor plates here for the 90 degree conne connection, for the T connection, the straight connection and here where three panels are connected together. If we switch to a 3D view, we see that there is not only one, there are three plates inserted. This is defined within the anchor plates family. If we edit the family, we see here the single anchor plates which are defined in separate families. Here under family types you can define rules how many anchor plates should be placed where in the wall panels. For these rules you can choose here parameters from the IDA shared parameter files. Here is for example a rule for the middle anchor plate. This rule says that if the height of the wall is more than one meter, the middle anchor plate will be created. Let's demonstrate this. I draw now a wall uh, which is only one meter high. So when I split this wall, you will see that only two plates are generated. So if I change the height of the wall to 1.5 meter and split this wall again, you see that there are now three plates. Now let's look on vertical connections. Therefore I split this wall which has a height of 8.5 meters. But before I do this, let's look into the configuration. We see here for the segmentation that the maximum wall height is 3 meters. So if the wall is higher than 3 meters, we will get another row of wall panels. Under the section parts, we can define a profile family which defines the horizontal connections between the two row panels. Now let's split this wall. We see that we get three rows of panels. Here is the defined profile between the two layers. Uh, 
and also the gap between the two layers. We see also the gap on the bottom of the wall. Now I switch off the profile between the layers and make the segmentation again for this wall. So we have now again three rows of panels, but with no profiles between the layers, only the gap. So let's connect these three rows uh, of panels together with DAOs and grout tubes. Therefore I select the wall and call the command vertical connection. In this dialog I can define if a connection object should be inserted on the top and the bottom. On the top I want to have a tube family to be inserted which with this uh, family type and on the bottom I want to have grout tubes. Here I can define rules of how many connections should be created. I have an edge distance of 500 and I can choose if I want to set a maximum distance between the connections or a fixed number. If I press OK, the program creates for each panel the defined connection type. I have on the top the DAOs and on the bottom the crowd tubes. And I can be sure that they are all in one line. 